Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and Marvel Studios unveiled a trailer for its upcoming Disney Plus slate in 2025, which includes trailer footage and release dates for What If Season 3 coming December 22nd of this year, Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man coming January 29th, 2025, Daredevil Born Again March 4th, 2025, Ironheart June 24th, 2025, Eyes of Wakanda August 6th, 2025, Marvel Zombies October 2025, and Wonder Man December 2025. I'm going to break down this full promo every Everything we know about each of these series and details that you might have missed from this very limited footage. So it turns out this trailer was actually edited by friend of the channel Andrew Hegley who also edited the first teaser for Black Panther Wakanda Forever that released in July 2022 and a number of trailers that you've loved from Marvel and Disney over the years and he did a really good job here just getting us hyped for each of these titles a lot of which some of us weren't really thinking that much about. We actually start in the TVA from Deadpool and Wolverine which this promo reveals is coming to Disney Plus on November 12th. Mr. Paradox leads Deadpool to the TVA wall, but now the screens are filled with Disney Plus, and we hear the light switch snap sound effect that we associated with Paradox's snap in the movie. I brought you here to offer you an opportunity. Walk with me. Hmm, this just tells me that Hagley is on the same page as the rest of us. Well done, my man. The fact that the TVA video wall is being likened with Disney Plus content is kind of a meta move, right? It reminds me of She-Hulk crashing through the thumbnail images of the Disney Plus homepage, as well as the AI robot Kevin, who's in the Marvel vault of the Disney lot, and our various theories that Kevin could be kind of an in-universe extension of the TVA. The top three screens now show Riri Williams' Ironheart in her Iron Man-inspired suit, Daredevil Devil Matt Murdock, and Wonder Man Simon Williams, played by Yahya Abdul-Mateen II. The bottom row of screens shows Wade Wilson unmasked, then Peter Parker from Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, then some characters from the Eyes of Wakanda, then some black and white footage that looks like Josh Gad, who will be playing a small role in Wonder Man, then an overhead shot of Murdock and the legal team walking out of a courthouse from Born Again, and then White Tiger from Born Again, and then Wolverine from his Let's F***ing Go moment, and then Wilson Fisk from Born Again when he's making his mayoral candidate speech. Then there's a close-up shot of Matt Murdock's broken red frame glasses that he picks up after laying out some guy. Then a quick shot of Riri Williams and a friend, I think that's Alden Ehrenreich as Joe McGillicuddy, uncovering her armored suit atop a car and that cover is a Cubbies flag as the series will be set in Chicago. Then we see Yaya as Simon Williams' Wonder Man at a Hollywood premiere. He's standing in front of the historic Fox Bruin Theater in Westwood. You may remember this from Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood where Margot Robbie as Sharon Tate goes to see herself in a film and Tarantino you know, couldn't help but, you know, make the feet the star of the shot. But Simon is wearing his iconic red jacket with the high collar and the sunglasses and the turtleneck as he appears in the comics. I'll talk more about Simon Williams in a bit, but he's a stuntman and an actor in Hollywood, one of the West Coast Avengers, brother to Eric Williams, aka the Grim Reaper, characters in the comics who have an interesting connection with Vision. But anyway, we'll get back to him. This opening section also teases Spider-Man from your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, Riri flying in her armored suit. Another quick shot of Alden Ehrenreich as Joe McGillicuddy and Ironheart, the Daredevil born again villain Muse. Then this older man showing a collection of art on his wall, probably related to Wonder Man. We see images of White Vision from WandaVision as well as Ultron. And then on the right side of screen, that's a xenomorph egg from the Alien poster. And then I believe that's a blue Navi among the collage of concept art. And we should note that both Alien and Avatar are Disney properties technically now. We also see Wilson Fisk and Vanessa toasting in a private dinner before the rabbit in a snowstorm painting that got stained in blood in the final fight in Daredevil season three. And Anthony Ramos says Parker Robbins the Hood from Ironheart, an antagonist who might, might get his powers from Sasha Baron Cohen as Mephisto. Ah, we'll see. Okay, let's go title by title and actually break them down like they're their own miniature trailers. Starting with Daredevil Born Again. Play the clip. It's been some time, hasn't it? You've come up in the world. I could say the same about you. I wonder if your darker half would agree. <laughs> Exactly what kind of a lawyer are you? A really good one. And there's also a bit more Daredevil footage at the end of this trailer. Play that clip. We have a long road ahead of us. Much to do. Okay, so Daredevil Born Again is something of a continuation of the Netflix Daredevil series, which in season three featured Wilson Fisk using a Daredevil doppelganger, Ben Poindexter, Bullseye, and Matt Murdock and Wilson Fisk having a very bloody fight that ended with both Fisk and Vanessa in custody. Now, Wilson Fisk is running for mayor. He appeared in Hawkeye as the big boss of the tracksuit mafia and the boss to Eleanor Bishop and the father figure to Maya Lopez, Echo. Maya shot him in the eye at the end of that show, but he returned in the Echo series with kind of like a cybernetic eye implant and new 
tech that allowed him to communicate one on one without the need of an intermediary. In Echo's post credit scene, Fisk decided to run for mayor of New York City. In this shot, a supporter behind Fisk wears a blue hat with yellow letters Fisk can fix it. We also see a shot of John Bernthal because Frank Castle Punisher is also returning for the series. An overhead shot shows a group of lawyers walking through the courthouse lobby, and you can see Matt with his cane on the right there. Then the shot of Matt Murdock and Wilson Fisk sitting across from each other for coffee in a diner, facing off in a public, nonviolent setting. Now that Fisk has to kind of just like play the part of a peacemaker during this campaign, we don't think it'll last long. Vanessa and Fisk, and Fisk is wearing an all white tuxedo, make this splashy entrance at a charity function, it looks like, through a door that looks heavily fortified, like a vault door of some kind. Now, if you are into backstabbing, faction building, and double crossing, it can be tough to get your fix day to day. Unless, of course, you play Game of Thrones Legends. Game of Thrones Legends is a match three RPG featuring epic team based player versus environment and player versus player battles with collectibles and upgradable champions. The battles are such a satisfying mix of matching puzzles, combos, and the special abilities each character has. It's one of those games where you get in the zone. It's super fun to mix and match allies and equip iconic weapons from the show to make your teams even stronger. You can take on other players, which is super fun. I'm building grudges that will entangle my lineage for generations to come, and it is so fun. Want to check it out yourself? Secure your legacy. Download Game of Thrones Legends by clicking the link in the description or scan the QR code to get 50 gold, 3,000 food, and, and a daily summon token to start your journey. Then we see two people smashing in through the window of Josie's bar. Oh, come on, don't do this to Josie's. Then some shots of Matt opening his box to his batons and Daredevil leaping off a balcony with the city skyline behind him. That kind of looks like it might not be VFX, but rather like either a matte painting or a miniature practical backdrop. There's just something about this that looks very like Tim Burton's Batman to me, and I really love the lighting of the shot. Then we see Daredevil fighting Muse in Muse's hideout. You can actually see Muse's art on the walls. It looks like a rendition of Muse, a rendition of the white tiger mask, and then a Punisher skull. You can see paint cans everywhere. Muse is wearing a hat and a white mask and suspenders. So Muse is from Charles Soule's Daredevil run in 2016, a serial killer and an artist inspired somewhat by Banksy, a killer who terrifies people with horrifying street art that in some cases uses the blood and remains of the people he has killed. We get a close up of Muse later. He looks great in this. He's got inky tear stains on the mask, but they left his eyes practical. And we still don't know who's playing Muse, but they really cast an actor with just some like crazy bloodshot eyes that look great. We also see Daredevil fighting Muse in a different location, lassoing him with his cable extensions with the batons. The action and stunts of the Daredevil footage just makes me so excited for the show. And yes, new rock stars will be picking back up with our Road to Born Again rewatch series starting in 2025, where we're going to go back through Daredevil seasons one, two, and three, as well as the Punisher seasons and Defenders. Yusuf Khan, father to Kamala Khan from Ms. Marvel and The Marvels, appears in this series as someone Matt helps out. Feels like part of the plan of this series will be to expand the street level of the MCU with shows like this and further connections to Hawkeye and Ms. Marvel and perhaps a future Young Avengers series that we definitely need Joe Locke Wiccan to be in. The later section shows part of Wilson Fisk's campaign speech. He wears an American flag lapel pin, but then another red pin beneath it that might be like an apple for the big apple. He's having trouble making out what that is. Okay, on to your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man coming January 29th. This animated series, formerly titled Spider-Man Freshman Year, is coming from Jeff Trammell. And we just see a few quick shots of this with this version of Peter Parker voiced by Hudson Thames, who also voices him in What If Season 3. His practical suit uses web shooters with hoses running to tanks in the backpack. And I love how when he thwips, there is an impact ring representing a kind of residual misty spray from the thwip. The animation just looks really great here. But let's move on to Ironheart coming June 24th. Roll the clip. I'm gonna build something undeniable. Anyone who's ever accomplished anything iconic in life has had to do some questionable things to get it done. So this Ironheart footage shows Dominique Thorne returning as Riri Williams after Black Panther Wakanda Forever. We see her in her workshop at MIT. And we know that Jim Rash's school administrator from MIT is gonna be here and that Riri might get kicked out. We also see some shots of her welding, somewhat evoking Tony Stark in the cave with the box of scraps. We see her bulky, I think that's her Model 1 armor that she's doing in the lab using, I assume, school resources to do. And I love this shot of the final piece of it, just the boot has separate thrusters that assembles onto her foot. It looks so good. 
It's kind of like Tony Stark's Mark 42 armor from Iron Man 3, which I would argue was his messiest, but also his most experimental and creative period. I love the design detail that she can extend the length of her arm by having her hand in the forearm of the armor and her fingers can mechanically puppet the fingers of the armor. So this armor is like more of an exoskeleton as opposed to just a suit that she wears and matches her height and form. Anthony Ramos plays Parker Robbins the Hood, who looks like he is doing some kind of spiritual ritual here and has some interesting tattoos on his shoulder and arm. Sasha Baron Cohen is reportedly playing Mephisto in the series. Now, the Hood gets his powers from Dormammu in the comics. I'm just waiting to see how Mephisto fits in the series tonally. We also see Riri's Model 1 helmet clamping onto her face with this clank sound effect, and I just love the way her armor looks in the series. The fact that we see multiple pieces of it coming together like in the original 2008 Iron Man. It's a big visual improvement from the, you know, kind of plasticky robotic body of Ironheart's armor in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. We will see at least one other suit on the show, armor that is more an expression of Riri's personality, decorated with her art and has those streaks of red in it. She uses this armor to smash a truck and then fly through a tunnel that's transporting a car on a track. Later, we even see her dancing in it. I'm super pumped for the show. Now, we are getting What If Season 3 way earlier than I expected, coming December 22nd, 2024. That's seven weeks from now, folks. I'm assuming they're going to do another holiday release. I'm not crazy about one episode a day like they did last year. It'd be, I'd much rather prefer one a week, but whatever. They're going to do what they're going to do. In these shots, we see Nick Fury with scrolls, also Shang-Chi and a kind of Western cowboy getup. But I think the standout shot here is a Gundam Captain America. And I think we can assume from other trailer shots that this is Sam Wilson. Then Marvel Zombies coming October 2025. The battle they will sing about for ages. So Marvel Zombies, based on the Robert Kirkman run of the comics, looks like it'll explore a zombie-covered Marvel Earth that was established in What If Season 1 Episode 5, which ended in Wakanda with Zombie Thanos having the Infinity Stones. We see here a zombie Okoye, and I think that might be zombie Wanda Maximoff because they all have red eyes. I'm thinking she might be controlling these zombies. The coolest detail here is Blade as Moon Knight. Yeah, it's not yet clear if Mahershala Ali is voicing Blade, but it seems like Marvel Zombies is going to continue to expand that whole What If hypothetical concept where what if this person was this person. Okay, let's move on to the Wonder Man shots. You can slate whenever you're ready. Simon Williams, reading for Wonder Man. I was born to play this character. Whee! And we both have a lot riding on this. You better not mess this up. I know. So Yaya Abdul-Mateen plays Simon Williams, a stuntman and actor working in Hollywood. Joining him on this series is Ben Kingsley, coming back as Trevor Slattery from Iron Man 3, who later appeared in Shang-Chi as Wen Wu's court jester. Ed Harris plays Simon's agent, Neil Saroyan, and Demetrius Gross plays Simon's brother, Eric Williams, aka the Grim Reaper from Marvel Comics. Both characters do have complicated backstories that connect to Vision. Destin Daniel Cretton directed the first two episodes. He previously directed Shang-Chi and was going to be attached to the fifth Avengers film. Now will be directing the fourth Spider-Man film. It seems like this series is going to explore like an action forward side of the film and TV industry, kind of like HBO's Barry or The Fall Guy, both the Ryan Gosling movie and the 80s TV series, with a bit of superhero wish fulfillment thrown in there. Now, in the comics, Simon Williams is the son of a rich industrialist rival to Stark Industries. He ends up falling in with Baron Zemo during the Masters of Evil period, and Zemo offers to make him an ion-powered superhero who attacks the Avengers. But later, Ultron will use Simon Williams' brainwaves and the time spent with the Avengers to complete to Vision's synthesoid form using the body of the original Human Torch. In this show, it seems like Wonder Man is a fictional character in a TV series that Simon is auditioning for and will desperately do anything to his body to be perfect for this part. My theory is that someone in the industry might have recorded or witnessed the WandaVision sitcom Hex broadcast from Westview, New Jersey, and thought, hey, this might actually make a good TV show. Might even be that guy with all the concept art that we saw earlier. Simon is an actor auditioning for that role, and he may end up making the choice to, like, irradiate his body out of desperation to get the part. Now, we should remember that there's also a Vision Quest series that's on the way, maybe coming 2026, that's going to feature the white Vision form, who escaped from Westview, and the return of Ultron, and that show is being described as part three of the WandaVision trilogy with Agatha. Wonder Man could be like a spinoff of that, as Marvel Studios seeks to establish the West Coast Avengers. Wonder Man was originally described as a Marvel Spotlight series, now it seems to be a firmly Marvel television series. Spotlight, so far, seems to have just been a category made for Echo and Echo alone, and if that's the case, that's kind of a bummer. And in this Wonder Man footage, there's a chase scene past a movie theater. It looks like the marquee shows Some Like It Hot. That's a 1959 Billy Wilder comedy with the all-time best closing line. Oh, I'm a man. Well, nobody's perfect. (laughs) 
there's also some brief shots of Eyes of Wakanda coming in August 2025. Only four episodes, but the animation just looks so good. The series will explore the Wakandans through history on different missions to recover vibranium artifacts from different regions of the world before they are used for evil purposes. Which of these series are you most excited for? Comment down below with your thoughts. Follow me at EA Voss and subscribe to all three channels of the New Rockstars Network for breakdowns and news coverage of everything you love. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.